South Sudan, Iraq, and Yemen. These are just three of the world's most dangerous countries. But what happens when a third world country has absolutely no leadership? Can you survive a nation where white people are kidnapped and extorted for their wealth? And most importantly, why would Arab, a 26 year old white YouTuber, visit this hellhole to begin with? I'm Indart, today we'll dive into the catastrophic tragedy of Arab. We'll discuss how he went from a failing Fortnite streamer to one of YouTube's most viral travellers. However, in order to fully understand how saddening Arab's current situation really is, let's go back to where it all began. On the 27th of October 2015, a 17-year-old guy with a strong interest in both YouTube and gaming would begin his content creation journey. Initially, Arab's channel was headed towards becoming a prank, skit, or meme channel. With early uploads such as YouTube drama in a nutshell, Dr. Phil interviews Leafy is here, and I joined a frat. That's right, after months on YouTube, I had finally figured out the secrets. Pootie King had taught me. All I needed to do was put my two cents in. It wasn't about comedy, it was about drama. Put your two cents in and get 20 cents out. I had fing figured it out. But the question was, does it work? It f***ing worked! What? What the f***? But just five months in, the first change would happen. On the 9th of June 2018, a vastly different style of video would be uploaded to the channel. And judging by the videos that followed, the Fortnite uploads were definitely here to stay. However, to call Arab's rise to 100,000 subscribers easy would be a massive over-exaggeration. The majority of his Fortnite videos received almost no viewership, but there was one trait on his side, intense persistence. It was through this that Arab would begin to have videos performing well above his expected standards. For example, I coached Savid to qualify for EU Dreamhack, again, garnering a whopping 570,000 views along with I coached the most uncoachable player in Fortnite, which would pass over 750,000 views. But there was another factor that strongly influenced the rapid rise of Arab, collabs. Even before his YouTube presence had developed, Arab was a well-respected streamer. Therefore, in the early days of his career, Arab would collaborate with soon-to-be massive games. From an early video with prank giant Joey Salads, to clutching a squad win with famous comedic legend Ricky Berwick, to even playing duos with one of Fortnite's most popular streamers. Arab's collabs played an undeniable role in his rise to fame. However, the video which really put Arab's name on the map was a little more controversial. Although he didn't know it at the time, the video I coached an aimbutter in FNCS 24 kills, uploaded by Arab on the 8th of May 2020, would go on to become his most popular Fortnite video of all time, amassing over 1.6 million views. Fast forwarding to 2021, Fortnite was nowhere near as popular as it once was. Things were getting serious. Arab needed to make a drastic change if he wanted even the slightest chance of saving his career. So how would Arab's content change lead him to becoming one of the world's most popular YouTubers? What was the catalyst behind a subscriber growth of over 1 million in just two years? And how was Arab's life put into serious danger three separate times? Fortnite's decline was a clear motivation to jump ship, but what appeared to be the final nail in the coffin for Arab was an event that was out of his hands. On the 21st of October 2021, Arab uploaded a video titled Twitch is deleting my channel. Hey, um, Twitch is deleting my channel. Not just me, but thousands of other creators. And it's not their fault. It's actually greedy record labels fault. I woke up this morning with an email that said, Yo, Arab, motherfucker, you got three days to delete every clip that you have that has copyright in it, or we're going to start handing you DMCA strikes. As he would explain, greedy, unfair, and immoral record labels had decided to abuse the copyright system. Legally, they were in the right, and Arab was forced into an inescapable situation. 
Although Arab's positive mindset turned the situation around, on New Year's Eve of December 2021, he uploaded a video announcing the most difficult, and as we'll get into later, best career choice he would ever make. Now it's time to watch Arab. I thought he'd be on a podcast or coaching a top player, but every now and then he finds himself in these situations. The high ground king, an IGL god, a brand risk. I mean, give him whatever label you want, this man can entertain, no matter what. It's that high risk, high reward lifestyle that's so addicting to watch. I mean, you can feel it in every shot, every decision, every making moment. Speaking of which, some risky plays coming out of him here right now, but if it's anything like the Arab we know, he's gonna dive in head first and come out on top, giving us moments and memories to remember for a lifetime. I quit gaming three months ago. But the video wasn't just a recap. 2021 was the year Arab made the most pivotal decision of his life. And as the video title suggested, he was quitting gaming for good. The positive impact of this massive decision went further than just his personal life. Just three days later, on the 2nd of January 2022, Arab uploaded a video announcing he had a quote, real life job. Yo guys, it's my first day being banned on Twitch. I decided that it's time to get a real job. I'd rather not go without, you know, a source of revenue. So I applied to this local gas station. I figured it kind of fits the whole memo. And I have an interview right now at noon. So I'm hoping it goes well. I feel like I could absolutely kill it here. Yo, hey, what's up? I'm the new Hyrie. We spoke on the phone. He told me to come at noon. The influencer guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? How hey. are you? Uh, I just have a few questions for you. Yeah, see sure. if uh, you'd be a good fit. Sure, sure. So, uh, you got any previous experience? I mean, not in like the ga not in gas stations. No, I'm I'm pretty good at like Twitter and stuff. I could probably like run your social media accounts. Um, I mean, we don't have like a Twitter or anything like that, but um, that's okay. What's uh, what about what's your ethnicity? Uh, I'm Middle Eastern. Welcome to the team, man. Thank you. That's all I needed Thank to hear. You. I got the job. I didn't know it would be that easy. Despite the video being a skit, with only 26,000 views, the reception was surprisingly positive with comments like, This is the true definition of a content creator. When unexpected things happen, you think quick on your feet and create different content. Seeing the newfound positive feedback, Arab would upload even more skits, including, I got signed to an esports team. I've officially signed. In the talks for months, baby. And this is the next step. Somebody took a chance on your boy. Is it even a chance? Somebody took a chance on your boy A-Rab, but it's not a chance. I met President Donald Trump in Vegas. I know you're banned, but if you could say one thing to Twitter, what would it be? Twitter. Twitter. Donald Trump, you heard it here first. And even comparing Logan Paul and KSI's drink Prime versus Gatorade. Logan, I know you're probably watching this, huh? KSI, YouTube maybe? I don't know if you guys have internet in the UK. Which performed decently well, amassing roughly 50,000 views. But overall, Arab's vlog style skits weren't performing as he would have expected. Arab had to find a way to spice up his content or else he would really end up working at a gas station. Therefore, on the 31st of January, Arab uploaded his first video in a new format. But this city isn't real, bro. The city is so beautiful. Just went and exchanged my cash for Durham's is what they're called. And uh, now we're going to the bazaar. We're going to start up the first stream. Despite his Dubai travel series severely underperforming, it was more than clear Arab was passionate about creating in this new style. Perhaps what he needed were more interesting or more extreme topics. And in the following months, Arab would continue the series, documenting his travels to Thailand with some pretty cool moments rock just to show stream the view it's beautiful bro it's beautiful in this country but there was one clear problem arab's thailand travels performed even worse than the dubai series with the majority of videos not even surpassing 10,000 views if he wanted to keep youtube as his career something had to change and change fast but luckily for arab he knew there was one format he could fall back on collabs for example, on the 10th of June 2022, Arab uploaded a video with his arch nemesis, Jake Lucky, who was a journalist who attempted to end his career. 
And this wasn't all. Arab was willing to use any of his connections to generate an interesting collab, going so far as reaching out to his old Fortnite friends whilst creating a series of three videos together. Coaching Reet to Dreamhack Finals, how Fortnite pros train for Dreamhack Sweden, and planting aimbot on pro players. And this series ended up spiralling to even bigger collaborations, uploading a video with arguably Fortnite's biggest streamer, Tifu. I swear to God, I love you, man. I love you. Hey, represent from all the way from Sweden. Nonetheless, things really began to change for Arab when he uploaded a video titled I Broke Andrew Tate. Oh, what the f are you doing? which not only enabled him to garner over 200,000 views, but created the momentum necessary for his channel to finally take off. As on the 18th of September 2022, Arab uploaded an intriguing travel video with a noticeably different vibe. So we're at the Grand Bazaar today in Istanbul, Turkey, where they basically have really good fakes of different designer brands. We're going behind the scenes today with a friend that I met yesterday that I actually bought this watch off of. Super high quality. First quality is what they call it here in Turkey. And I like befriended him and he's gonna show us behind the scenes all their shops. They got like shops for everything. Like even the Yeezys I was buying yesterday, you can't tell the difference. The video titled Inside Turkey's $1 billion Illegal Replica Industry would go on to gain almost a million views. Displaying the Arabs travel videos were not just a lost cause. In fact, maybe they were the complete opposite. This left us asking, were Arabs travel videos the beginning of an empire? or just a one-hit wonder generating false hope. Just three months later, on the 31st of December 2022, Arab would upload another dark, investigative and risque travel video in a similar style to the last. It was time to head to the city and get an actual view of what life was like in Qatar. My driver, a packy. See, that's funny because like, he wouldn't be offended by it, but you know for sure there's a bunch of white people in the U.S. watching this that are offended by it. There's more money here in Qatar than Pakistan? Yes. Izar had a similar life to Ali. Work, send money back home, and repeat. He asked me about my channel, so I got a new sub. Let's go, baby. And then I gave him $100 because well, I'm filming it and this makes me likable. To the surprise of some, the video performed well, gaining 130,000 views. The increased exposure and supportive comments such as, I loved how you were interviewing foreigners living in the country and asked them about their life and experiences, but also interviewed the locals and got their opinion of it all too. This type of content is amazing. Keep it up. The interactions with the locals is refreshing compared to what's on the rest of YouTube. This enticed Arab to create the first of many viral video formats. Just one month later, Arab uploaded I Travelled to Africa's Most Dangerous Hood, a video that not only changed the course of Arab's channel, but also his life. Like, is there anything I need to know about Cape Town? But you're in one of the most dangerous places in the world, not gonna lie. So things like, for example, when you leave the airport, if you're gonna take an Uber, Something that tends to happen a lot in South Africa from the airport is um, the Uber drivers will actually work with other people and they'll sort of follow you from, from the airport and they'll end up, for example, trying to steal your So they'll most probably pull over on the side of the road and they'll essentially try and rob you. How do you avoid that, taxis? This video performed incredibly well, gaining half a million views. But this was nowhere near the heights that this series would reach. In fact, whilst traveling in Africa, Arab uploaded an even more interesting, unique, and viral video titled Inside South Africa's Underground Trade, a video which went on to pass 1.5 million views. However, as signaled by an upload shortly after, South Africa wasn't exactly happy with his escapades. But Arab's ban from South Africa didn't stop him from exploring the dangerous beauty the continent had to offer. With videos such as Solo inside Kenya's most dangerous slum. These are the toilets, so it's in the ground. And how do you clean it? This is the guy I told you I would give you. Oh yeah? My friend. My friend. I don't like people who is recording you, but you don't ask anything to me. I wasn't recording you, I was recording on. And gang attacks me in Nigeria's floating slum. Oh, 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 oh,
Yup, that's me behind the camera, surrounded by six large Nigerian men trying to beat the living daylights out of me in Nigeria's dirtiest slum that floats on water. A video which garnered over a million views. It was clear Arabs' travels to Africa was certainly worth the danger. However, what about other third world countries outlawed by gangs? And how would Arab travel in one of the world's most dangerous states? On the 22nd of May 2023, Arab would begin his Brazilian voyage with an upload titled Avoiding Scams in Sao Paulo, Brazil, along with a later video titled I investigated Brazil's land of zombies, Cracolodania. Despite generating over 2 million views across 5 videos, there was one upload yet to come. A video which took things to a whole other level. Arab uploaded a seemingly impossible video titled I Spent a Day with Rio Brazil's Most Dangerous Gang which raised serious questions. How did Arab get in contact with such a brutal gang? Was this even worth it for a million views of YouTube clout? And was there even a possibility Arab made it out alive? The stakes were high, but judging by the fact that Arabs safely uploaded the video, things went pretty well. And when you see the view count of 12 million, you begin to understand how Arab learnt one of the most dangerous lessons in his career. He learnt that no matter how big a risk he took, there'd always be a tunnel of positivity, light, and most importantly to him, high view counts. But as we'll get into, this lesson did Arab far more harm than good. As the dangerous video became more successful by the minute, it raised a crucial question. Could the success of this video have given him a false sense of security, later leading to severe consequences? Well, at the time, it was most definitely a blessing. Arab had gone from a failing, broke and desolate Fortnite YouTuber to one of the most popular and renowned travel creators in the history of YouTube. And the gravy train didn't end there. Arab continued soaring into stardom, and on the 19th of December 2023, Arab uploaded the first episode of another incredibly viral series. When's the last time you killed someone? Are you? For the next 100 hours, I will be living with the most dangerous cartel in the entire world. The only thing the world knows about these guys is that they're some of the most ruthless killers that exist. Talked it back in and I shot him again. I basically went up to him and, and smashed him with the, with, the, with the butt of the rifle until his uh, head exploded. Arab's documentation of his first day in the Mexican cartel would go on to be another of his viral hits on his channel. With just over 3 million views, the immensely popular upload would build Arab's momentum going into the new year. Starting 2024, things were going incredibly well. He had just passed 1.5 million subscribers, 500 million views, and built a reputation as YouTube's most fearless traveler. However, what if this image was challenged? What if Arab put himself in such a dangerous situation that he would truly face his limit? And would he make it out alive, if at all? In March of 2024, Arab visited one of the world's most dangerous countries, Haiti. With a recorded death count of nearly 2,000 in 2024, and a completely absent government, going to this country was not only risky, but potentially fatal. On the 29th of March 2024, Drama Alert tweeted, Exclusive, YouTuber Your Fellow Arab has been kidnapped in Haiti by a local gang who is demanding $600,000 in ransom. His driver was also kidnapped. An initial payment of $40,000 has been made, but despite his bold and fearless attitude, Arab wasn't immune to the danger of Haiti. But there was still an important question that remained. Why would Arab even go to this country in the first place? 
Arab's motivation to visit was much like his many cartel videos. He wanted to interview the leader of one of Haiti's most dangerous gangs. The other times it actually went pretty well. Despite that, this time he wasn't so lucky. Arab had left one final clue hinting at the reason behind his disappearance. We're not taking that risk at night. We're going to be leaving at 3 in the morning. We're the only people in this entire hotel. Everybody else is workers, employees, etc. Because no one's allowed in the country, so there's no tourists here. And with the public being in a frenzy of mixed reactions, everyone spoke their truths. There were two main viewpoints on the situation. One that Arab was incredibly stupid, immature and irresponsible for going to Haiti in the first place. Given the travel warnings, gang violence and most notably, president leaving the country while another party of people were worried about their favourite YouTuber vanishing. But how exactly did Arab even get kidnapped in the first place? On the 18th of April 2024, Arab uploaded the first part of a series that would show everything leading up to and after his Haitian kidnapping. The video would begin by giving a scary, disturbing and even upsetting details about the state of what was at one point a beautiful paradise. Despite the dangerous nature of the country, Arab was intrigued. But why? What was the purpose behind Arab's desire to interview one of the world's most brutal gangsters? And more than anything, Arab appeared excited by the danger. It was more than just the views. The possibility of death made him feel alive. However, what if God tried to warn him about his fate before even entering the outlawed country? As Arab would soon go on to explain whilst travelling in a taxi at 5 in the morning on his way to the war zone. Despite being in a car crash, Arab didn't take this as a warning, but instead a blessing, a sign to keep pushing. To Arab, the sky was the limit. All potential risk was only imagined. At this point, most people would have turned back and called it off, but this crash should have honestly killed me, and I was practically unharmed. So I saw this as a sign that God was protecting me. Keep pushing. After Arab made it safely to the border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic, there was only one problem that seemingly remained. How would he even enter a desolate, dying and outlawed country? The security was being incredibly annoying. A group of journalists were suspiciously hanging around the border, a fact that made it incredibly difficult for Arab to enter the country. Being asked to wait for hours on end, things definitely weren't looking good. Despite being able to enter the country, Arab's goods had seemingly been taken out of his possession. Some suspected that Arab's personal electronics and money for the trip had been stolen, and that he couldn't really trust random people in a third world country to take proper care of his belongings. Things went on to get even more bizarre as he began to enter the country. Arab's fears about his personal belongings and money being stolen had grown even further. And the worst part? There was absolutely no certainty that things turned out well. He was forced into yet another inescapable situation, with the only potential consequence being his life. But just when you thought things would calm down, Arab would find himself in an even more dangerous situation. In an outlawed country with no leadership, he found himself trekking through the bush. There were multiple serious problems. How could Arab trust a random guy with gang affiliations in Haiti to safely transport him through an open area? And what happens if a greedy citizen decided to hold him hostage for his white wealth? I don't even know this guy's name. Thirty minutes. We gotta walk through the jungle to get to Haiti. What have I gotten myself into? Although Arab's whole journey in the worn out nation was frightening, things were relatively safe. But that wasn't all Arab experienced whilst in the nation. Sure, everything went well during his first night, until he went to visit the gang themselves. It was at this point, Arab was kidnapped by a different member of the same gang, and a ransom was placed for his release. Luckily, and as revealed earlier, friends were able to negotiate using money and bargaining to get him released. Whether you agree, disagree, love or hate Arab, his message is a whole other level of real. Almost nobody in the world can say they've visited Brazil's most dangerous gang, Mexico's most dangerous cartel, and being kidnapped in one of the world's most noisiest countries. On top of that, surviving it all. 
While many are skeptics to his advice, there is a fair amount of merit on the Arab's vast knowledge of the globe and culture. Regardless of the safety of his travels, his impulsivity, or his own knowledge of limits, Arab is without a doubt one of the most renowned, respected, and intelligent travel creators who we'll remember for decades to come.